Guys, I was looking through the YouTube comments lately and I saw a lot of you wanted to see more about up close and stuff so I decided the best way to do that would be to actually do a build guide. I took this computer apart a little bit ago and I have a video, it's my last video, I might put in an annotation up here. But this is the case that I've modded, I'm gonna first go over what's in this case and then I'm gonna do a build guide and how I do it. So let's first look at the back. First thing you see is those four screws. Also, there's a little clip in here that holds it on. And um, so you have to take off the clip from inside before you, so you can't just pull it off. The clip on this one has broken off, so I can just do that. There is no reason you'd have to take this off typically if you want to build your system in there, if you're gonna do a case mod like this. Next thing, front. You see you have a speaker. You can actually use the speaker. It's not really loud unless you have an additional amplifier. It's not really awesome, I'll say that. But, I mean, it's a decent speaker if you can get it working right. I never got to doing that. You have three buttons. One you can push with your finger, but it's hard to push. I'd suggest doing this reset if you want to have that feature. You have a standard power button. I have it plugged up to a little switch. I'll show you how I do that. And a little one that you need, like a paper clip to push it. I don't know. You could, if you have a clear CMOS, you could put it up there. If you really go like that, but I almost never clear my CMOS. So... And I would never hit reset, it just kind of stays on. A 5 and a quarter inch drive bay. Very hard to put a drive in here, you'd have to get like a laptop one and cut it if you want to do that. And here's a zip drive. You probably put a floppy in here, you could also probably, you can take this off relatively easy on the inside. By popping this cover in, and it's a little fetchy, but you can get it off relatively easily. And that's it. This side has the same way of taking off this panel. It's these four screws, the inside clip, and there's also two screws on the inside that holds this handle on. The back is a little interesting, because if you want to get a standard ATX power supply in, like the power supply I have over here, you realize that when it goes up here, the switch is at the top and not the side that Apple thought it would be, with their main power supply. So you're going to have to cut this hole out a little bigger. I also suggest, if you don't care about looks, this is an 80 mil fan, this has a 120. Cooling for these power supplies is really bad. Your power supply is going to get loud. So I have a suggestion to help solve that problem. And we're all the way around. Let's now look at the top. There was actually nothing on the top of this system. Except for a little dirt I put on there. And on the bottom, you can see I cut a hole for a 120 millimeter fan that I actually have a radiator in for liquid cooling. I'll show you that in a bit. You also have these holes all stocked, there's no other intake holes stock. And basically there's also two slits for air in here. I'll show you where this, these air slits go. And let's take a quick look on the inside. Now first thing, let's look back and when this computer was actually made in 2001, it had a custom motherboard that actually had five slots instead of um, what we use on Micro Atex of four today. This was a different fan. I have a blue LED fan I put in here. No tape. This tape right here is holding my SSD in. I, um, when this was created, there was a little cutout here that was the intake fan. It went through a fan over a heat sink here that cooled the CPU. CPUs back then made much less power than they do today. So, you didn't really need a very good heat sink. And then some of the air got exhausted from here. It was an 80 mil fan so power supply, so it just went in here and out the back. Had another fan that sucked it in, blowed it up here. Graphics cards didn't use very much power back then, too. Hard drives mounted here. I'm not mounting any hard drives here. I've got a radiator here, though. And I have this fan. Now let's get back to all the inside mods. First thing I have is I have a cutout here for power supply. This helps just get it a little bit more airflow. Because that power supply, even without that cutout, with that cutout, is not a quiet one. This cable right here is the cable for the for the speaker, I don't use it currently. I have used it before. It's really not impressive. It's not that loud. You could get a specialized amp, but you need special EQ because you can't play any bass on it. Okay, so it's a new day, and last time I was talking about how this is a new custom power adapter that I'm using, which is actually the one that fits perfectly on the motherboard I'm using. Don't think there's else much to say about the case, so. Let's get into the build. Now, building in this case is a fun thing to do, as in it's it's not the best experience. I 
Let's just put this SSD back in here. I built in a couple of other cases before, and this one's definitely one of the worst. For the one reason of it's kind of annoying. So, first thing that I like to do is this is the power supply. This is how it's gonna go. There isn't screw holes for it to go the other way and suck it out from the CPU socket. I might want it to go that way if it could, but I can't, so deal with it. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And this just screws in here via some special torque screws. And I think it looks nice here and stuff if you get it to go through this hole in here when you build it. So I'm just gonna start shoving all these cables in here. So I'm gonna speed this up and let's do this. Hey guys, so I just finished building the system and one thing you can notice is that there's really only four cables that I actually need, which is the 4 pin, power PCI Express, SATA, and 24 pin. So that's all the cables I need from the power supply in this actual system. So, and I had to screw it in at the end by these torque screws, it is not standard Phillips. You could, but it kind of has a look via torque screws. So let's get into the next part, and what I'd say the next part is, is motherboard installation. Motherboard installation in this case is kind of annoying, but it's not that bad. First thing you want to do is you want to put this side cover in. This thing just kind of slipped in here. You cut out this piece with a Dremel, because it doesn't come like this stock, but and depending on how well you can do it, depends on how well it'll fit and stuff, it can be kind of sketchy, I'll say that. The next thing you're going to want to do is take your motherboard. I keep the cool on here because I really don't want to redo thermal paste. And I line it up with the holes. This can be kind of annoying. Line it up. We'll go around, make sure it's in there nice and well. And then I screw in a couple of, I make sure these bolts, because I'm not using threads for this build, are in there. I make sure it's kind of loose, that it's not too tight, because if it's too tight, you can put extra strain, and if that's not going to help the life of your motherboard, then you take three nuts, I say loosely put them on here, because you don't want it ultra tight. Ultra tight's not going to really help the lifetime and stuff. These motherboards really don't want to be bent, in this case it's not perfect for it. But out of the three ATX um, Power Mac G4s out there, I'd say this one's the easiest. Because what the MDD does, is it does make this higher, which you could argue is easier, but it also turns it around backwards, which is harder. And it also makes this a slim power supply. With this one, you can actually mount a ATX power supply natively. I didn't have to do any mods to get a power supply in here. Now I can see I have the screws in here, this thing's not going to fall out, but it's not ultra tight either, which is good. Now let's start doing some cable. So the first cable I'm going to want to run is this cable. It's a, it's a, it's my power cable that's connected to the front switch, it also has a hardware LED and the power LED. The next thing cable that I'm going to want to run is this, this is an 8 pin. And this cable has kind of a little way it likes going through here. So, I don't know if this will work with every motherboard. Make sure you hold the motherboard where you push it in. And it kind of just has a little kind of slit that I could say it falls into. Way right about here. And it kind of looks halfway decent if I ever open it. Kind of somehow I think fits under here. If I can get it to go. Yeah, so that's not going to fit right. Oh, my lock. And, yeah. So it kind of fits in there with it, like that. This is a SATA cable. SATA cable does what 
This goes under this cable, I think. So cabling is just fun. Kind of want it to look nice and neat. You don't want it to get all caught up. Neat cable ones are very nice and hard to do sometimes. Okay, next cable is a PCI Express power cable. This thing I can see is twisted, so I'm just going to run it on like here. So this guy's going to plug in about here once he's ready. He has a little zip tie on him or two to keep these two cables together. The next one's a 24 pin. 24 pin can be a pain because it isn't perfect on this motherboard. Gotta tweak it. Make sure it's put in just right. Line this cable up and just wiggle it in there. And there you go. He's in. I have this blue tape in here to keep this cable from rubbing too much with the graphics card. But let's first put in this card. This is a wireless card. It's I think it does and I'm pretty sure. I just use this one because I don't really want to run the LAN to where my motherboard to where my computer is located. I'm going to take out a screw, put Phillips cap into the screwdriver. And screw it in. This is a 1X card. They don't really have to be screwed in. There's not, these cards really don't need to be screwed in tightly. I put this card in the bottom slot just because it's better that way. And this guy just kind of slips in here. He clicks into place, hold the bottom of the motherboard I suggest. And he just kind of slips right in. Be sure to plug in your PCI Express power connector. I forget to do that. Forgot to do that a couple of times and if you don't remember to, it can kind of be a pain to do it. Now, the one thing you may be wondering is why am I not running my radiator in there? And it's because the radiator doesn't exactly, how do I say this, fit when the case is open. The tubes aren't long enough. If I ever get the opportunity to run a custom loop in here, so that would mean like taking off these standard tubes and run much longer ones and have them all perfect. And I'd probably liquid cool the graphics card because the graphics card is typically the loudest in this computer. Just because these fans really don't have very much intake from here. So, let's first unscrew these radiator screws right here. They don't really do them very much, so just kind of holding this fan on for now. Now I can see the included fan, the same fan. It's kind of odd because its blades are kind of opposite. And I'm going to go take a break and do radiator mounting in a minute. Okay, so I just got back from a little break. I plugged in some SATA cables. I did a little bit. I still have some cables to tidy up, but I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, I might as well do the cables now. So, these cables, how they get mounted is they all get squishied, squishied up here. And you can attach them with, I don't have a zip tie on me right now. But if I have a zip tie, I will zip tie it in right here. And it actually looks pretty neat. Uh huh. So that's kind of how you make all these cables look all nice and tidy. You zip time in there. But let's now look at radiator mounting. Well, off camera I did a little bit more looking at it and I finished building it and you can see I got the graphics card, the high speed stuff shows I spent a lot of time playing around and getting this radiator in here and that was really fun. SSD, it all closes, it looks pretty nice for this type of computer and enjoy. There will be a video showing more about the insides and showing temperatures and stuff like that. Okay.